My man, Kyle Zruzek. Welcome to the show, my guy. How you doing? What's up, dude? Dude, not much, man. How are you doing this morning on this wonderful, beautiful day? It's a nice day. I'm doing good. I actually had uh, some drinks last night and uh, some food at a restaurant for like, you know, one of the first times with some buddies from, uh, from the gym, Hybrid Martial Arts. And yeah, feeling good. Woke up early this morning, like we were talking about and getting after it. Oh, dude, you have to, man. So what restaurant did you go to? Were you guys actually inside or were you guys outside or how was that working so out in Chicago? So it seems like right now everything that can be open has to have like those sliding doors or, you know, oh, kind man. of that garage style. So they're seating uh, closest to that and then outside, which it was totally cold last night. So I was freezing my ass off, but luckily we were able to sneak inside. Went to this restaurant called uh, Ramen Sun. Just Here, a hot bowl of soup. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're all about the restaurants, man. And uh, community, if you don't know, Kyle is, and you probably don't know, Kyle's in Chicago. So where exactly are you at in Chicago? Yeah, so I live uh, like right at um, Harlem and Irving. So it's a little place called Dunning Square. Um, but it's not too far from like Portage Park, if people know that. Right on, man. And it's like, dude, you're so huge in the restaurants, man. Every, every time I see, we saw you for my birthday a couple years ago and you're like, oh dude, we got to go here. We got to go here. You knew the owner. And I was like, this is awesome, man. Like you guys are totally into the scene down there, man. That place is legit, man. That place has been open since like the seventies. That guy has been Dang. doing Spanish tapas forever. And uh, he closed one of his other restaurants. So he focuses just on that. He's there every day. I mean, chef's probably 60 something years old and just still walking around greeting people it's one of my favorite spots i'm glad we got to share that yeah dude that was definitely an awesome place the food was fantastic the uh, owner was awesome and it was so nice man it, it had like that that old tile all over the place yeah. it, it, it was it was legit man like that was yeah. a legit place dude it's like real small bathroom man like like but this is it man like when you walk in those places like when you sit down you're like yep Yep, this is going to be good. You know, like the hands are always heavy when you get poured and stuff. You're like, this is good, you know? Yeah, that's Emilio's Tapas in Hillside for people that are wondering. Yeah, it's, I would definitely, you guys just go with a bunch of people and like get every single thing off the menu. Because we had, holy shit, we had like eight different things before we went and yeah. played some video games. You know what I'm saying? And it's totally consumable because it's all small plates, so. Right, for sure. Have you talked to him at all? Is he doing okay? I have not. We've ordered a couple times from there just to, you know, we try to keep supporting the places. Um, he does have a patio, so we were just talking about maybe hitting that this week. But no, unfortunately, hopefully he's doing well. Yeah, it's tough right now man, with everything that's going on. I mean, like, that's what you hear, those statistics in Chicago. There's over, like, 17,000-plus restaurants in Chicago alone, and, like, more than 5,000 of them will not be, be able to open their doors again. It's just, it's yeah. a shame. Dude. And all the ones, like, like, think about that. You heard about Ditka's. The original Ditka's is closing because of this bullshit, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it sucks. It's scary. But I think, like, someone else told me, too, like, uh, they're like, yeah, but you have to remember these really, really, really old places probably are using this as a way to get out. And I'm like, man, that's the wrong fucking attitude to have. I'm like, yeah. these, these places don't want to close. They've been here. No. Ditka's has been there for over what? 50 fucking years you know like yeah that's like a staple of chicago right and uh now that's closing and it's just interesting like to watch people that can quickly pivot their business i think granite kits and the alinea group has done a good job the boca group has done a good job where they're just like trying to offer meals that are you know affordable that are family style uh just trying to get out of their comfort zone of like the high-end dining and really just have to you know go back to the basics i think yeah, I saw you posted um, not too long ago, actually, you guys actually got like all this food in containers and you, you brought it home and like you had all this beautiful food. I'm like, that was from a high end restaurant, like good for them for re like for doing that type of stuff, you know? And not only that, but it's fun because they made it interactive. So they, they basically, you know, pre-cook everything, but you do have some aspect where you have to warm up the demi glaze. You have to, you know, put the meat in the oven. You got to, you know, put the uh, dressing and the salad together, stuff like that. So they make it interactive and you're like, oh man, I'm cooking kind of cooking this awesome food it was really cool I'm, I'm glad that they're doing that. I mean the things that you have to do and get back to your brass roots you know what I'm saying and it's like you have to do that I mean right now if you're any type of entrepreneur and owning a restaurant or any type of business and you're working from home like I think everyone had to pivot hard as shit right now yeah. like and I think that's where the true entrepreneurs come from where the true business owners come from is like there's an, like when your back's up against a wall, man, you do some pre pretty crazy shit. Like there's only one thing to do and you can't climb the wall. So you might as well come forward as hard as you can. And I think a lot of people have been doing that. And I think it's really great. How was your job going, man? I know you've been at home for a minute, bro. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, you know, for me before it was all planes, trains, and automobiles. I was traveling a ton, spent a lot of time time in New York, a lot of time uh, North Carolina, a lot of time in California, and now I'm basically like we were saying before uh, we got started. I'm basically like an inside sales rep, and it's really tough because you know going back to the restaurant thing. Like I've always been. Um, you know, a relationship builder, I, I think breaking bread with people, with my customers, with my friends is like such an important way to like really learn about someone and just being, you know, not being able to do that. My office is closed until October. Oh. Uh, we cannot travel at all. Um, cannot meet customers in, in person without manager approval. So it just becomes really difficult to stay connected. And then I'm bouncing off the walls. I take my dog for like five, six walks a day now. He's like, he loves it. But yeah, man, I just, it, it, it's interesting. And so like going back to like interesting business models and stuff, I actually just did something on Thursday night with some customers and it was like, all right, well, I want to do something so we can all get together as a team. Um, and so I found this lady in Texas. She has a company called Life at the Table and she does virtual cooking classes, but she ships wow. all the ingredients to your house. Right. And so then uh, all my customers, it was like 20 people we had. Um, we all made pizzas from scratch, dough, sauce. You know, we had kids, families, like all together, like making this pizza. And that, I mean, that's what it's all about, man. That's why, like, last night when I went out with my friends, you know, we used to go to the gym, work out. We'd take the seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you know, Muay Thai boxing class, stuff like that. And then it was always like, let's go get something to eat together. And just missing that for the last couple of months has been. Tough on me, tough on everybody, I'm sure. Yeah, I think that it's so hard because like when you are in sales or you're an entrepreneur, you're a trainer, like our business model is to be in front of you like all the time. And that's one of our strengths. And we double down on that. Like you put us in front of people. It's like the connection is going to be there. And like that's the most important is the connection and the impact being made. It's like you can't make that. It's like if you do a Zoom call, it's less of an impact, less of a connection. And if you do a phone call, there is no connection at all because everyone's distracted and they're walking around. You can't even see the person's face or how they look, yeah. or the, emo the emotions on their face. I think that's a big thing too. Like you take that out of it. It's like, fuck, man, like that was, that is what I do. And then once again, going back to that pivot thing, it's like, you have to start to figure that out again, you know, and like, Hey, they did it back in the day with cold calls. We can do it today with zoom. It's a step above that, but are you doing zoom calls or just phone calls or like, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm inundated with, with zoom calls. And I, I actually, it's funny. Um, you know, I had my forecast call uh, with my team yesterday and my boss was like, Hey, you're not, your camera's not on. And I'm like, I've decided unless I'm presenting or there's a relevant reason, like, I'm not going to put my camera on it. Like nobody wants to see my mug like this much. Um, and I think customers are like zoom overloaded at this point. Oh dude. Um, my company is actually doing a, uh, a, a shutdown the week of the 29th and they're just calling it like a mental health shutdown. And it's like, I think, you know, I've talked to some, some high level folks that, you know, I work with a large insurance company and they're like, there's no break in the day. Like before you had, you know, those normal breaks, you go get coffee, you go get lunch, right. you have a minute. And now it's just like, boom, 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 all day, all night. Time zones are irrelevant. Everybody's working all the time. And so I think, you know, feeling the strain of the Zoom calls has been, I, I, yeah, I'm like, no more video for me, guys. <laughs> You're just totally hiding out like you guys I'm just gonna talk and you can figure it out. You don't yeah, need to like, you know, I'm wearing a hat. I didn't do my hair today. I probably didn't shave. Right, right. <laughs> And it's like, you can't know that again. Like, what are you gonna do? Put a fucking suit on? Like, fuck that, man. Like, that's crazy. If you put a suit on, you have no pants on. What are you gonna do? You know? And it's <laughs> funny because like some people in my industry, you know, like, and some people you, you talk about how people motivate themselves, like what gets, you know, different people like in that zone. Um, and I know guys that are like, yeah, dude, I have to kind of suit up every morning, play that same role. Otherwise I just feel like I'm yeah. not doing anything, you know? So, well, it's all part of those habits, man, those habitual habits. And it's like, yeah. it's, it's part of us, man. If like, and that's the thing, if it's like, it's, if I, if I don't get up every, for, if I don't get up first thing in the morning and get to doing my routine, I feel completely off. Like if, yeah. if I don't hit, hit my walk or hit my vitamins or hit my meditation in the morning, like my sitting down and acknowledging that I'm up at the time that I need to be up at and understanding that today's the day that I have to become 1% better. It's like, if you don't have those routines set in the place, it's like you wake up late, you don't take the vitamins, you don't drink the water when you should, you go out for a walk or you forget about drinking water. It's like, that just throws a curveball into your day, man. And it's like, if anyone's listening to this, like, just try to do something like every single morning 
that could be habitual in a positive way, obviously not a negative way, but I think those are the things that we kind of miss out on. But dude, some people are like that by habit, man. I think I, I'm definitely a habitual person for sure. Yeah, I don't, I have my morning routine down. It definitely doesn't uh, necessarily involve putting on a suit, but yeah, yeah I mean, you've got to get into that zone and you got to do it very quickly. I mean, a lot of times, man, I'm getting calls by like 7.30. Wow. You know, so. Yeah, man, what time do you kind of close up at night? Does it all always vary or? <laughs> it just depends. It, it really depends on the day. I mean, I've been on calls as late as seven o'clock because I have customers Damn. in Singapore. Oh. Um, you know, we have, I've had outages at customers where you're like on the phone at one o'clock in the morning trying to figure out what's going on. But wow. those are, you know, hopefully fewer and farther in between. Yeah, for sure, man. What time is it over in Singapore when if it's seven o'clock here, what time is it over there? I think it's like, they're just starting their day. So it's like, uh, I think it's 10 o'clock there. Okay. How many, you, you used to go out there quite a bit for business too, right? I've spent some time in Thailand. I've spent some time in uh, China. Thailand was my favorite. And that was, um, you know, a real great experience because I got to actually train uh, Muay Thai at some really legit, um, you know, Thai boxing gyms and that, you know, martial arts for me, um, you know, I was on a bad path like five years ago and martial arts for me has really like enriched my life. Not only like the friendships I've built, but also, you know, just being a healthier person. You know, I know I, I, don't, I don't get up, get up every day and like check the scale anymore. And at one point in my life, like that was like a number that defined me. Mm -hmm. And now I just know that like, I'm going to be active today. You know, I'm going to get a workout in, I'm going to go see my friends. I'm going to take a class, you know, it just makes my life so much easier. And I'm not the type of person I do really bad, you know, by myself. Right. And that's why I like that group experience. Yeah. Well, Hey man, you're setting up a great habit that turns into a skill and with, with doing like the jits or with doing that type of stuff, like it's a chess game, man. So you're working your head, you know, head to toe, you're working something. And I think that's a great thing. Plus I'm sure I don't know firsthand, but I can imagine that, that community is just fucking awesome, man. I can only imagine that everyone's in there probably with relatable stories. Everyone's yeah. trying to be better. Or everyone has a, a bad pass or a good pass, whatever it is. But that is like the one thing you have to show up. You can't yeah. walk in there as a weak-minded person every day. Like you got to show the fuck up, man. Cause that, oh, other two, you. you know, yeah, yeah, it'll humble you for sure. <laughs> I think you know, that's awesome. Here's in and I'm like, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, you've got guys there that, you know, have dedicated their whole lives. You've got, you know, my buddy, Travis, who I was out with yesterday, Muay Thai for 14 years, you know? Holy so really shit. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. That's what I do. I want to go back to Thailand, man. It was amazing. The food out there was amazing. Really? Uh, the people were so friendly, like so nice. Um, just beautiful, beautiful country. And like, dude, the street food is, oh. is legit. I would, I would go to town. I'd spend a whole day just getting fat on the street food. I can oh, only yeah. imagine. Do they, did you go anywhere? It was like just a street of food and shops, like just like Michigan Avenue type style. Is there just something just like all the way down the street? Yeah. So they have like a main strip, but really you got to get outside of that. Um, vendors do come out at night and some of those vendors are like really good. Like, you know, you got a woman making pad thai on the street. You got this guy, you know, grilling up some, some awesome meat. He's got it all marinated. He's, you know, doing his thing. Uh, and then they do have markets and the markets are just amazing. And those are just like tables and tables uh, of endless, like whatever you can imagine. The fried chicken out there was great. Oh, dude, I, I bet, man. I mean, yeah, I think these families probably make a living on that and they probably spend all day prepping the food and then they go out at night till what? What, what, what was the latest you're out? Like three in the morning? Oh yeah, you're like three, four in the morning. Just eating and drinking beers and shit yeah. on the street. Like, yeah. oh, see, the culture, man, like culture. Yeah. Like that's something that, I mean, we love community around here, but it's like, it's all scheduled, right? Like you have to be here at a certain time and it ends a certain time. With that, it's like, it's probably a huge nightlife there, right? Like everyone probably comes out and everyone probably sits around and chills out for a minute late at night. I'm huge sure. Huge nightlife, huge nightlife. Um, you know, all from all over the world cultures, um, a lot of Australians out there, but yeah, man. And, and you go hard too, especially if you want to do training while you're out there. It's like, you gotta, you know, party at night and get up early and these Muay Thai gyms do not F around, dude. They, oh, they do not fuck around there. <laughs> yeah. They're legit. They're like, hey, here's a jump rope. Go jump rope for a half hour. You're like, okay. 
<laughs> like like straight like you want me to just like yeah. i'll come get you when you're done you're like when's yeah. that <laughs> like like soon <laughs> no i'm sure man i'm sure you saw some badass did you get to see oh you did you got to see some fights right yeah man we went and saw fights the weirdest thing to me was the kids you know like it, it's so poor out there especially in the rural communities and the boys you know you, you're kind of born to fight like that right you so you know a lot of times your parents would send you to a place and that place would provide, you know, your shelter, your schooling, your food, and then train Muay Thai a couple times a day. And you've got, you know, eight year olds, nine year olds that are in the ring, you know, throwing elbows at each other and like, it's full blown. And like, that's like, if that kid wins, that kid's gonna be able to send money back to his, his mom and dad. So it's super interesting. Wow. And then, like, yeah, we saw some really high level, high level people, man. It was really awesome. And the betting out there. They took advantage of me, dude. (laughs) I'm sure they did. (laughs) You're probably out there. You're probably out there. I figured out at one point, and I did. (laughs) They looked at you and they were like, we got him. (laughs) We're we're, we're taking him. (laughs) They let me win a a couple, get, you know, prime the pump, and then it was over. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's probably like their football, right? Like it's such a uh, if the they're so poor out there, it's like it's like the national, yeah, path. yeah. It's like they they take those kids and it's like, um, do they ask the fam? I'm sure they ask the families, but it's like they put them in like a little training academy and like they kind of just stay there the rest of their life or like for years on end. It's kind of like they're schooling. It's not. Or- uh, it's usually you know usually uh, they're done fighting by the time they're like twenty or in their early twenties. Okay. And like, and they've had hundreds of fights at that point. And then the best go on. Um, and then the rest kind of just go and get like regular jobs. I mean, the hotel we were staying at, uh, the security guard was an ex fighter. And it was funny cause he would, he would see us training and he'd always like, he'd be like, Hey guys, uh, you know, like, <laughs> but he was an awesome guy, man. If the personalities out there were great. The people were just like all smiles. Dude, that's awesome, man. I was, I would, like, my experience in China. Yeah. China was a little different, but yeah. an amazing time. We saw Beijing and it was a great, uh, a great city, but definitely like a much more stoic, stoic culture. Okay. You know, just, you don't see that, like that um, elation that you kind of get from the Thai people. It was amazing. Yeah. I figured it'd be like more business out in Beijing, you know, like more like straightforward, like this yeah. is what it is type thing. For sure. Did you get to see any markets out there? Like any food markets out there or anything? No, um, Beijing and, and the airport are kind of far away. So by the oh. time we got settled in, um, you know, we, uh, we really um, just had t- time to like go grab a hot pot, which was awesome. And then uh, drink a couple beers. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So we're talking about all this business talk and let's, uh, why don't you, you know, introduce what you do for business that since everyone get like a better glimpse into like what you do for your life. Yeah. I, uh, I work at a technology firm. So we are one of the largest data management companies in the world and I'm an enterprise account manager for them. Uh, nothing super sexy, man. It's, uh, it's great though. I found technology, um, about 13 years ago. Um, I was selling cars at the time. And was just lucky enough to um, sell a car to a guy that thought I was, you know, worth a, an interview. And I've had some really good mentors throughout my sales career. Um, so I've been actually doing this now for this brand for about seven years, which Damn. is which is awesome. Oh man, that's great, dude. Do you think this is going to be something? Maybe not for this company, but like going on. This is kind of like your realm. This is your niche of what you want to be doing, and just grow and move up the, the ladder if you can. Yeah, I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about like the transformation that IT can like bring to the world, bring right. to business. You know, I think that especially with the pandemic today, there's a real opportunity for, you know, American Airlines is like a great example of like a local Chicago based company that's experiencing a lot of hardships. And I think about like when all those people were like canceling um, their flights and, and every, their, you know, everything was being, um, you know, side sideways in terms of like what your travel was going to be you know united airlines doesn't have a sophisticated you know like chat bot or um you know an ai like uh that can you know that can interact via voice with you and if they had implemented a technology like that think about how easy it would be for people to just like call in switch the reservations 
and not have to have like all these people on the phones and then you've got people angry because you, you got an hour wait time. So it's like implementing technologies like that and the data that drives those technologies. Like the, I, I, I think it's super interesting. So I can't believe they didn't have anything put into place, man. That sounds so, it, it's that so sounds so Flintstone, legacy, man. Like for these legacy companies to transform and like implement um, kind of this new style of like cloud native technology and um, you know, all these tools that are being developed, it's really difficult. And so a lot of times, you know, you have to look at the priorities of the business and you know, you're like, is, is spending a couple million dollars on this thing that people say is going to be good uh, better than just kind of keeping the lights on. Right. And I think now people will pivot that strategy and they'll look at those next generation projects and say, okay, how can we automate things, make things simpler, make things smarter for when our users interact with us? I find that super interesting as well. Um, <clears throat> not the fact that, I mean, they should have had these things put into place a long time ago. And I'm sure a big corporation like that probably looks at it in like dollar wise, like, nah, that's not needed right now to invest all this money in that when they, they don't probably don't either have it or they just don't want to use it, you know, or, or spend the money. I get that. But now if you don't have it and someone else does, guess what? You fucking missed the ball. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's very interesting now where things are kind of going. Cause I can guarantee you, I talk to a lot of people now that are all home based now, obviously. And they're like, I don't think we're going to be going back to the office. I think this is the new, the new, new, this is the brand new thing we're going to be doing. And then a lot of these, a lot of companies in Chicago is like startup companies. They don't longer have to pay rent on those buildings. They're yeah. done. You know, as soon as their lease is up, my buddy works. He's like, we're probably never going to go back. It's already been talked about. They could save all that money and pump it back into the business or pay your people a little bit more money. And I think that's a, we're going to see a little bit of that too. I think a lot of people are kind of figuring some things out. Like, you know what? We don't have to go back to the office anymore. And I think that's very interesting to me. Yeah. I'm hearing some large corporations say like, it'll be a, maybe a 50% return like mm. overall, but they're going to look at this as an opportunity to cut costs, potentially close satellite offices. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's super interesting and people don't understand like the back end hardware and software and all the things that drive the enablement for you to work from home, for you to be a remote person that can kind of work from anywhere. Um, you know, these VDI instances, virtual desktop instances that are deployed, um, you know, using technologies like Zoom and making sure that people have bandwidth so that like, uh, 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 you know, it's not like super right. choppy, like that's all very heavy lifting and companies, you know, it's surprising that companies were able to make that pivot so quickly, but making that move back is like, why would you do that? We put all this effort and people are now productive at home to bring them back. You're stopping productivity. And that's, that's something that, you know, customers are going to weigh. And I think you're spot on. Like a lot of people aren't going to go back to the office. Yeah. There's no need to anymore. You know, if you can, if you can already look at it, like, holy cow, we're going to save, you know, X amount of money per month over the course of 12 months. Like they're probably like, holy shit, there's the money that we really wanted to invest in the business to begin with. Yeah. Here it is. We don't have to take out another loan and, yeah. or we can pay some of our top guys, you know, that, that are earner top guys or girls that are earners a little bit more money. And that makes them happy. That makes their productivity go back up or be better than it already was. And it has, it's better incentives. So I could totally see it happening. I mean, I already see it happening with a lot of like what I do and a lot of coaches and things like that, bro. Like talk about hard pivots, man. Like yeah. every, everything I have is online right now, man. Like I'm barely, I'm, I'm not in front of my clients anymore. It scares the shit out of me. And I've talked about it many a times, even my podcast I just dropped on Friday. It was like, I had to pivot. I, I'm, I'm in the course right now of pivoting hard as fuck. I really had to pull that e-brake and fucking turn hard and try to figure it out from here on out. You know, like this is it. What we're doing yeah. right now is the future. I could see it. The writing's on the fucking wall. And I think more things are going to go online. And like, like you said about, you know, having the technology for the Zoom, it's like, I think Skype, when this, when this quarantine first happened, they're, they're, they went way up. I mean, they were like, they were like borderline. We were like right in this medium 50% zone. This happened. Everything for them went up. Like they're killing it now. Well, it's interesting though, because like Skype comparative to Zoom from a technology perspective, like Zoom has proverbially uh, eaten Skype's lunch at this point. Really? Like, yeah, they are, um, they are the tool uh, du jour. They're the tool everybody's using today. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, Microsoft kind of missed the boat on Skype and now they're pivoting 
their strategy uh, strategy to teams. I don't know if you've used that mm-hmm. at all. No, but that's something that a lot of people are now like, and it's good. I mean, these these tools are all like a dime a dozen to me. Like, you know, right? They all kind of WebEx, Skype, Zoom. You know, for me as a user, I don't prefer one or or the other. I think they all offer the same functionality. What that means for business, though, I think you know, especially with some of the, I don't know if you saw like Zoom um, got in trouble for routing uh, stuff through China. Right. Um, so they had um, like all the communications being routed through China and the American government was like, that's not good. And there was like some Forbes articles written about it. And then people were like, Zoom's not a secure uh, application. Oh. And now people are, so then like Zoom, you know, did some quick work to do some like encryption and stuff like that. Um, but there are a lot of companies, at least it, like in my world, people were like, oh, you know, this Zoom, I don't know if I could use it for, you know, for our enterprise. And you're like, whatever. Nobody you, cares about go get on go get on any platform. You can say that about any platform right now. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't just not just Zoom, dude. That's you could probably make up a oh this could be happening for this and this could be happening for that. It doesn't matter what the hell you're using, man. You kidding me right now? All Everything's right. so out there today that like someone like me is just like mm, okay, you know, like I don't, no, I, I, mean, would, I would never know if it was right or wrong. Like there's so much out there. You can't physically be on top of all the time. You're not on top of it. You don't know what's getting worked on right now. Yeah. You have no clue unless like you're in it. Like if you're in it, making it, you get it. But that information, by the time you get it, there's something else has already started. It's like, what are you going to yeah. do? I mean, and like, look at you and, and like how you run your business. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's, there's some things that you've paid for uh, in terms of the software that, that you use, but you have like a plethora of like all this open source, you know, kind of free software. I mean, I ran a podcast that, uh, is no longer in existence. Um, but you know, we used audible at the time and that was totally free. Right. Um, so there's those tools that are available for everybody. Oh, there's tons of stuff out there. That's free and tons of stuff that's super cheap. Like, yeah, you're right. I I'm, I'm paid into a lot of different things and, and it's like, it all works. It all works. But like, yeah, I use, um, I use, was it audacity? Yeah. To like, to do stuff like that. Yeah, audacity. I said audible, but yeah, I, that's yeah, the book. Audacity, yeah. Audacity, audacity is like, yeah, that's free, you know, and Zoom, Zoom's very cheap too if you want to do one-on-one per month. But like if you want to do five or more people, obviously that's more money. Same thing, you know, it's like, you know, everything works, and but you can get away with, you know, doing free stuff or things like that. So it's like, as of right now, I mean, hopefully, I'm sure they're going to put a bigger price tag on some bigger stuff coming up just because if people aren't going to the offices and they need to actually have the bandwidth and you actually need to have the things that actually work, you're going to be paying probably a pretty penny for some programming, but then you're going to get into like program specific for your company. And then that's just a whole nother, you know, oh, yeah, for sure. So how often are you doing zooms? Are you like with customers all the time on this now or how? Yeah, you I would do 100%, man. I do a weekly check. Well, my weekly check-ins, if I can't get them on a zoom, I'll get them on a FaceTime on my phone, but for, you know, podcasting and most of the stuff that I do, all my podcasts are on zoom now. So, um, I'm getting away from doing solo podcasts. That's now I, I take my camera for those now and I mess with it on premiere pro and that's why I bought the camera. So it's a nicer, awesome. yeah, it's a nicer, it's a nicer piece of content for sure. And it just, it's like you said, we're talking about technology. It's you want to level the game up, man. You know, some of this haziness that you have on a zoom call goes away with the camera and it comes out beautiful and you can actually see the things that are behind me and like the blurry lights aren't blurry anymore with the camera and things like Dark that. Circles so, under my eyes. <laughs> and then make them darker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm on zoom quite a bit, man. Like you, you use zoom all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's right now it's the primary, it's right. the primary for us. Um, yeah, usually it's like that or I'm texting customers at this point in my life. So yeah, texting people for an update. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. remember me? <laughs> I'd be awesome. at your office if I could. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like there's no connection with that shit. It's so fucking wild, man. It's just, uh, it's, it's so wild. So, hey, man, I noticed that you're in your new house. You moved in a, a little bit ago, man. How's that all going, bro? Why did you move in the first place? You had, I thought you had a great house. You know, uh, so we had a really small house. It was okay. nice. Um, and we spent five years kind of, you know, remodeling it and did a lot of uh, the heavy lifting ourselves. Um, but it was 850 square feet. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, pretty small. Um, you know, I, I two bedroom, one bath, didn't have my own office. Right. Uh, so it was just kind of looking to grow. And, um, you know, I wanted to move closer to my gym. That's super important for me. 
Um, so this place kind of offered 1700 square feet. So it kind of doubles, wow. you know, our footprint, um, and then gives me a basement too, that I can mess around with. And, uh, it's super close to my gym. It's like 15 minutes down Irving park now. So nice. it's really a lot simpler. Hell yeah. And then, and then my wife's parents are like right down the street too. And then this is the area where my, uh, my grandmother lived and I, you know, I know this area. So it's just kind of like felt right. You know, I know all the places I can order from Mr. Beef, things that are important to me. <laughs> Hell yeah. If you haven't had it, if you hadn't had it, come to Chicago and get a fucking Mr. Beef, man. It's, it's insane, bro. It's insane. Well, Hey man, that's how things come full circle, right? Like yeah, you're back in the hometown, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's great. Amazing, especially yeah. having like, especially having the parents on the street that helps out a lot, man. Like it, it really does, especially now where it's like, shit, like you want human connection, you know? Like, oh you yeah, for sure. Interaction. We just walk down there and like, they sit on their porch, we'll chat. So you got an office set up now or you're trying to work on that or? I'm working on that. Yeah. Cool. Unfortunately, I've been like sitting at the uh, kitchen table for right. most of my days. You know, we moved, uh, we bought this house in February. Okay. And so like right before everything hit. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like getting furniture and stuff like that's been like super difficult. So, you know, the bedroom, the living room, the main areas are built out, but my office is a mess. Uh, I don't really have like half the stuff. It's like just being delivered. Um, so I'm going to sort some of that out this morning. I've got some shelving and um, I've got my desk now, but there's a bunch more stuff I need, but I can't wait, man. Like, you know, I need like for some of the stuff I do, I need dual monitors and like, it's just more comfortable. Like if I'm working on an Excel file or if I'm like, you know, doing a PowerPoint presentation, I can, you know, grab, screen grab between two things. Um, working on the laptop at my kitchen table. I'm like, yeah, you know, dude, I know it's, it's, I was so used to before everything happened. Like I used to leave the house every single day, go train my clients. And after my clients, I'd like go to Starbucks or go to somewhere to work or I'd be outside somewhere sitting at a table drinking coffee or whatever, eating lunch, and I would work until I went back home. I was rarely at home. I came home probably to shit, shower, shave, and go back out for another client yeah. or something like that. Or if I needed to go work at Starbucks for a couple hours, I needed to come home to eat and go right back out to another client. And it's one of those things like so much more of your daily productivity will get done somewhere else or in a, or in a facility or in your own like on your own house in a different vicinity where it's like, I need to work in this space. And once you have a dedicated workspace, so much more gets done as opposed to, I'm like you, man, I've been sitting at this kitchen table. There's yeah. a million, there's a million and one things pulling my shirt every time I'm sitting in that kitchen table, yeah. you know, like I can just not work. It's so simple to be like, Nope, I'm done. You know, it's like, dude, it's noon. It's like, Oh shit, it's noon. I should probably keep working. You know, like, I mean, yeah. it's so easy like that. And I think that's a big thing. You have to have your own workspace, man. Our, our apartment at the end of this month, we're actually, Carrie Ann is probably, she's making some noise in the other room. She's packing up her room. We have an apartment, very small apartment. We love it. Two bedrooms, one bath. And we really love it. But every time we've been here, we're going on this. We just signed a lease again for our fifth year here, right? It was our fifth yeah. year here. And we love it though. It's like we're right in downtown Mokina. You, you, you know, downtown Mokina, right off of Front Street. Super cute and quaint, man. We're, we're walking distance from like Aurelio's Pizza where we know the owners and walking distance from, you know, um, a great little bar that we go to. But it's like we're getting remodeled as well. But as soon as at the end of the month, we're getting remodeled and then we're going to move back in and the month after that. But I'm actually going to take a lot of stuff out of my room and I'm going to make like a podcast studio. For, That's cool. You know, I have to, I, ha I can't keep doing this. Like if I turn this computer <laughs> TV, what's up? Like I'm in the, I'm in the corner of the house. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. Dude, that's exactly how I was in the last place. It was like a little small desk, you know? Oh, yeah, you can't. It's like funny. You're like, you know, I, 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 I sold $25 million sitting at that desk. You know what I mean? You're like, that's crazy. Jesus. That's crazy. We mean, we're going to make it work, but you got to feel good where you sit, man. Like you yeah. got to, you got to feel like. No, I'm stoked, man. I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to put up like some of my collectibles and like yeah. I'm gonna make it, I'm going to make it like really, uh, you know, kind of like, like. First time again, like that I've ever been able to decorate a room or, you know, as an adult for myself. So it'll be like, get a, you know, Scarface poster up or something. I <laughs> <laughs> totally make it your own. Like that's how, that's how I'm feeling too, man. Like Carrie yeah. Ann obviously has the realm in here. It's like, you know, whatever. She's like, oh, I'm going to hang this up. I'm like, yeah, fucking whatever. I, I can't say anything about it anymore. It's kind of like that, but getting back in the bedroom with the podcast. I'm like, that's all me, man. Like I'm going to make it mine. So I bought this, um, this really neat, uh, it looks like um, like a hardwood floor almost. Mm -hmm. And it's on a flexi piece of paper. You can actually pull it off and put it on your wall. And you, it looks like I put up shiplap. You know what I'm saying? 
And, um, but I'm not going to obviously put it on the wall cause I don't own this place. I'll just rip the paint right off. So I'm sure. going to tack it up really cool. And I was thinking about getting like, um, a pretty like inexpensive, like, um, neon, maybe it says like everyday Anthony J and hang that. Oh, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to, yeah. I want to make something mine. And I think it's going to be such a small space, like in the corner, it's not going to take up room, but I've already thought about it. It's like, what do I do with my dresser? Well, I'm just going to shove it in my closet. I does, doesn't need to be out in the open, you know, and get, get two like vintage chairs where I can actually have someone over for as a guest and there's enough space to actually sit and film it. So just something like that will just really push me. And when we do things like this too, it pushes you to work harder at what you do yeah. because now, now you don't have an excuse. Yeah. So like same thing. No, I love the microphone setup and everything you got going on, man. It's all about expanding that, you know, you get in the zone. Like I, and one of my favorite things to do when I was running a podcast was like editing. But again, like you just need to have that proper space. It's the only way to do it. I mean, and it, like I said, it, it cuts out the excuses. The same thing with why I bought that, that brand new camera, you know, for me, it was a very big investment. You know, I spent $600 on it with everything together. Yeah. That's and I bought a nice Premier, camera and I bought like premier pro for the computer. So that's, you know, 35 bucks a month. Sure. So it's one of those things that like, gets a huge investment. And a lot of people that are in photography are like, Oh, that's the cheapest camera out there. It's like, but listen, for me, it's a huge investment, but it's also, has pushed me to keep myself accountable because every time I look at that fucking camera and that camera bag, I'm like, well, you better do something because For sure. the money has to come back ASAP, you know? For and until sure. I start racking in the clients with it, it's like, it hasn't paid itself back yet. Just because I'm making content, it's not paying itself back yet. So it's one of those things that you got to keep cracking away at things. And I think um, it's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, right across. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have your space, man. So I'm proud of you, man. I think that's great. I can't wait to come visit the house and cook up some burgers and relax for a fight or something like that. You know? Yeah. I'm stoked, man. I, I love it. Um, because the kitchen and the living room are connected. Um, you know, the ki kitchen looks out. awesome, dude. We've been kitchen cooking a lot great. more, man. Um, and yeah, dude, we've got a little deck out here. It's a small yard. I mean, it's a Chicago, right. You know, footprint, right. It's not anything huge. Um, the last place we had had a huge yard. Um, but dude, I, 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 I love this place and can't wait to have you guys here. Dude, that's awesome, man. What do you got going on for the rest of the day? Just packing. Uh, so I am going to, uh, like I was saying before, my, uh, my office is still in boxes. So I'm going to sort a lot of um, like my watches and stuff out because I'm going to like put those on display up there. Um, so I'm like going to get all my boxes set up and stuff like that. And then uh, try to, I don't have the chair yet, but I'm going to try and set up the computer and the monitor and things like that on the desk. Um, so like work on that and then, um, yeah, I'm going to cook tonight. Sweet. And then tomorrow I got brunch with some friends and that'll be that. Is there a, is there a UFC card on tonight or no? Or is that next week? No, I think it's, um, I think it's next week. Next week. I don't think there's anything tonight. I just, I saw that they just uh, announced Hooker and Poirier though for the 27th. Oh, really? The last card last weekend was, uh, I didn't watch it, but like I saw all the replays the next day on YouTube and I'm like, damn, that was impressive. That was a wild. There card. were some great knockouts on that. I mean, the Cody Garbrandt fight and then obviously Sugar, uh, Sugar Shane. I don't know if you saw that, man. He put that dude's lights out. That dude was still oh, trying to fight the air man. afterwards. <laughs> it's scary, man. Like, you know, I've, you know, I've had friends that have been knocked out and it's like, it's scary. The, the, you know what these athletes do and like yeah. put themselves on the line it's just uh it's amazing and seeing the struggle from some of my boys that are like trying to fight and come up and you know they're in the amateur ranks right now and these guys are like they're warriors man dude i love it man well hey man i don't want to take up too much of your time on this beautiful day i gotta get cracking too so do you man but i just want to say thank you so much from me and the community that you came on today for coffee talk man i really appreciate it bro i love catching up with you man yeah thanks for having me dude dude for sure man you're the best dude i'll talk to you soon okay all right, love you, brother.